Okay, so we are on chapter five, and chapter four left us with a cliffhanger. It left us wondering what kind of dinosaur that we are going to see next. So let's find out. Chapter five, gold in the grass. Go, go, said Jack. He threw his notebook into his backpack. He pushed Annie toward the rope ladder. Bye, Henry, she said. Go, said Jack. He gave Annie a big push. Quit it, she said, but she started up the ladder. Jack scrambled after her. They tumbled into the treehouse. They were panting as they looked out the window at the dinosaur. He was standing on a hilltop, eating flowers off a tree. Oh, man, whispered Jack. We are in a time long ago. The dinosaur looked like a huge rhinoceros. rhinoceros. Only he had three horns instead of one. Two long ones above his eyes and one on his nose. He had a big shield-like thing behind his head. <laughs> what kind of dinosaur is it? It's a triceratops, said Jack. Does he eat people? <sighs> Whispered Annie. I'll look it up. Jack grabbed the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. There, he said. He pointed to a picture of a triceratops and read the caption. The Triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period. This plant-eating dinosaur weighed over 12,000 pounds. Jack slammed the book shut. Just plants, no meat. Let's go see them, said Annie. Are you nuts, said Jack. Don't you want to take notes about them? Hmm? Asked Annie. We're probably the first people in the whole world to ever see a real live Triceratops. Jack sighed. She was right. Let's go, he said. He shoved the dinosaur book into his back, into his backpack, and he slung it over his shoulder and started down the ladder. On the way down, Jack stopped. He called up to Annie. Just promise you won't pet him. I promise. Promise you won't kiss him. I promise. Promise you won't talk to him. I promise. Promise you won't. Go, go, she said. Jack went. Annie followed. When they stepped up the ladder, the pterodon gave them a kind look. Annie blew a kiss at him. Be back soon, Henry, she said cheerfully. Shh, said Jack, and he led the way through the ferns. Slowly and carefully, when he reached the bottom of the hill, he kneeled behind a fat bush. Annie knelt beside him and started to speak. Shh, Jack put his fingers to his lips. Annie made a face. Jack peeked out at the triceratops. Jack, the dinosaur was incredibly big, bigger than a truck. He was eating the flowers off a mangolia tree. Jack slipped his notebook out of his backpack. He wrote, eats flowers. Annie nudged him. Jack ignored her. He studied the triceratops again. He wrote, eats slowly. Annie nudged him hard. Jack looked at her. Annie pointed to herself. She walked her fingers through the air. She pointed to the dinosaur. She smiled. Was she teasing? She waved at Jack. Jack started to grab her. She laughed and jumped away. She fell into the grass. In full view of the triceratops. Get back, whispered Jack. Too late. The big dinosaur had spotted Annie. He gazed down at her from the hilltop. Half of a Mongolia flower was sticking out of his mouth. Oops, said Annie. Get back, Jack shouted at her. He looks nice, Jack. Nice? Watch out for his horns, Annie. No, he's nice, Jack. Nice? But the Triceratops just gazed calmly down at Annie. Then he turned and lopped away. Down the side of the hill. Bye, said Annie. She turned back to Jack. See? Jack grunted, but he wrote in his nice, in his notebook, nice. Why do you think that Jack's keeping a notebook and writing different information down about the dinosaurs he finds? I think that he's writing down information that he finds about each dinosaur so that he can learn and remember the dinosaurs and the information about them. Let's continue. Come on, let's look around some more, said Annie. 
As Jack started after Annie, he saw something glittering in the tall grass. He reached out and picked it up. A medallion! A gold medallion! Here goes the Triceratops. Bye, Triceratops! And then we see Jack holding a medallion. What letter is on it? M for medallion. And there's Annie. A letter was engraved on the medallion. A fancy M. Oh, so M isn't for medallion. Maybe it's for a name. What do you think? Oh man, someone's come here before us, Jack said softly. Chapter 6, Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was busy picking a flower from the Mongolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion. But Annie wasn't paying any attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh wow, she said. Annie! Clutching her Mongolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie came back. Jack shouted, Annie, come back! But Annie had disappeared. I'm going to kill her, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then he heard Annie shriek. Annie! Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here! Annie called. Annie! Jack grabbed his backpack and raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. <gasps> the valley below was filled with nests. Big nests made out of mud. And the nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Oh, Look at those tiny dinosaurs. Oh, and there's my puppy Oliver barking away. You must want to hear the story too. Annie was crunch crouching down next to one of the nests. And standing over her was a gigantic duck-billed dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was towering above Annie, waving her arms, making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me. Slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand. Crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. The duck-billed dinosaur followed her, still bellowing. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said softly. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched further down the hill until he was just an arm's distance from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, he said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head. Pretend to chew. Chew? Yes, I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. <makes noise> Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack raised his head. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. Thanks, Jack, for saving me, said Annie. You have to use your brain, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie! Too late. Annie held out her Mongolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly examined the babies. Some were craw crawling out of their nests. Where were the other mothers? Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duck-billed dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Nautosaurus lived in colonies. Well, a few mother babies, well, well, a few mother's baby sat the nests. Others hunted for food. So there we must be. So there must be more mothers close. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding Mongolia flowers to the giant, Anatosaurus. She's nice, Jack, Annie said. 
but suddenly the Natosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur barged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book down on top of his pack. He hurried up to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him throw up. An enormous, ugly monster was coming across the plain. He was walking up two big legs and swinging a long, thick tail and dangling tiny arms. He had two tiny arms. <gasps> he had a huge head and his jaws were wide open. <gasps> Even from far away, Jack could see his long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex! Oh, sorry. Tyrannosaurus Rex, whispered Jack. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack. To the treehouse. They dashed down the hill together, through the tall grass, through the ferns, past the tronodon, and right to the rope ladder. They scrambled up. Seconds later, they tumbled into the treehouse. Annie leaped to the window. He's going away, she said, panting. Jack pus pushed his glasses into place. He looked through the window with her. <gasps> the Tyrannosaurus was wandering off. But then the monster stopped and turned around. The two of them hunched down. <gasps> After a long moment, they raised their heads. They peeked again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek, said Jack. Nothing happened. I wish, wait, you were looking at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? The dinosaur book? Jack groaned. Oh no, I left the book and my pack on the hill. I have to go back. Oh, forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus, my notebook's in my pack with all my notes. Hurry, said Annie. Jack hurried down the rope ladder. He leaped to the ground. He raced past the pteranodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass, and up the hill. He looked down. There was his pack lying on the ground. On top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses, all standing guard around their nests. Where had they been? Did fear of the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. <sighs> Let's all take a deep breath together. Taking a deep breath can help us relax and feel better about ourselves and to help us get on with the rest of our day. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Breathe in. And breathe out through your mouth. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in and breathe out through your mouth. Let's go very slowly. All right, let's continue. Ready, set, go! He charged down the hill. He leaped to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. A terrible tuba sound. Another, another. All the Nautosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced to the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back. And he was standing between Jack and the treehouse. So, there's the Tyrannosaurus. It kind of looks like Jack's bigger than the Tyrannosaurus. Or the T-Rex, sorry. The Tyrannosaurus Rex. What do you think? That's because he's on top of a hill. And the dinosaurs below the hill. <laughs> and that is where we'll stop. So next time we will continue with chapter eight, A Giant Shadow.